personal drama. <laughs> Theater director Bulat Atabaev, the fine line between art and persecution. The story of Puruk. The rally in Puruk village as a prologue to the Janauzian massacre, life of the poor and the rich state. Permission zone. The escape of 11 soldiers from Zaisan border outpost. Rockets in the homeland. The shortcomings of the Baikonur space launching site lease. Russian rockets are hazardous, with rockets fuel equated to chemical weapons. Hello, I am Asalbek Abdullah, and you are watching Last KZ on K+. We review all the trends, events and personalities of the past week. After two incidents at the border, people's attention shifts back to Zhan Aozian. The activist of the opposition movement Halik Maidan Ajan Gulamirova was released from jail, simultaneously with the transfers of Bulat Atabayev and Jan Bulat Mamai to Zhan Aozian. Amirova was held in temporary detention centers in Janauzian and Aktao cities since her arrest in January 2012 on charges of inciting social hatred. The woman was the first to be arrested, followed by Vladimir Kozlov and Serik Sapargali, currently detained in the Aktao detention center. The current status of Amirova is not clear either. No one knows whether she is still a defendant or a witness. All is known at the moment is that she signed a gagging order. Everyone's first impression was that the change of restraint is due to Ajahn Gul's cooperation with the investigation team. Messages implying it were previously posted on social networking websites. Amirova's release was balanced with the arrests of the leader of the youth club, Ruh Pentil, Jean Bolat Mamai, and well-known stage director Bolat Atabaev. They are charged with the same infamous Article 164, and until last week couldn't leave Almaty on their own recognizance. However, later, both were escorted to Mangistau. At the wife's interpretation of Avalanche premiere just four months ago, the stage director chose the play for its underlying message. The plot has a group of elders holding their small settlement in constant fear, but people still eventually find their voice in freedom. At the wife likes actualized art forms and never avoids drawing similarities with the real life. <laughs> Many directors are afraid of staging plays as they were written, because they urge people not to be silent and scream out, which is why the hero cries, we need to say it. Books are everything for him. He always has a book in his hands, studying and reading it. Bolat Atabayev's sister Dana is collecting the director's belongings to pass them on in Aktao's detention ward. The stage director was detained so suddenly that Atabayev couldn't even take his essentials. The first to go in the bag are his favorite books, Sawezov's The Way of a Bai and Chekhov's Plays. Now a medicine pack, the oppositionist has a long list of ailments and has to take pills twice a day. These are all his medications. Here is a glucometer to measure his sugar level. Everything is in the bag now. After the director's arrest, his front door won't lock and the phone won't stop ringing. Sympathizers and onlookers lined up in front of his house. Dana says her brother's arrest completely changed her life. Usually far from politics, she now has to speak with journalists and reveal her attitude towards his civil stand. He let me know this was his choice. I warned him, saying the family and I are concerned, but he said his choice is not to leave. He wants his children and grandchildren to lead a better life. Last Sunday, Bulat Atabayev exited his house around 9.30. He was on his way to rehearsal at the Academy of Arts, but three young men, keeping watch inside a green jeep, blocked his passage. Somewhere between 9.30 and 10, someone started yelling for help. I looked out and I saw three people. At first, I couldn't make out what was happening. I thought it was young people fighting. When I looked closer, I saw men lying on the ground. When I looked even closer, it turned out to be our neighbor. 
Neighbors recall how three people in civilian clothes bound 60-year-old Atabayev grabbed him by the hair when he fell and threw him in the car. When someone began making noise, one of the men shouted out that they are members of the NSC and that no one should interfere. Aksana Mironova has been living next to Atabayev for 10 years and she doesn't understand why there was a need for brutality. He is a very kind man. I have orphaned grandchildren and when approached, Atabayev said he will take one of them under his wing. If there is any theatrical skills, he is a very good man. This is Atabayev's favorite song, say actors of the Aksaray Theater who consider the stage director a teacher as well. Many even call him their father figure. For me, Aksaray is a whole and many others. He is a father, a real man, a kind and sensitive person with very big heart. He's done so much for others. It would be nice if they could remember him at a time like this. There is a special air to Atabayev's troupe, so special that for the last three years its actors have been working free of charge due to financial issues stemming from Atabayev's political stance. They go on stage simply because it is interesting to do so under his tutelage. I gained so much knowledge from him in a year that I couldn't get in four years at the academy. Aksaray actress Guldarya is proud of being part of Balat Atabayev's troupe. He built a truly democratic system of selecting actors for certain roles within his creative team. You take a play and several actors or actresses may be interested in the same character, but he never placed restrictions for certain roles. As long as they wish, anyone can take on one and act it out. If it is too hard for them or it doesn't fit, the process takes place naturally. We were never taught to fight for a role like in other theatres. Aksara is currently preparing for its first performance without a leader. On June 25th, the Tabayev students will show Avalanche on the stage of Awezov Theatre. First and foremost, when you watch the play, you see that Atabayev has a clear-cut civic stand and it all hits the viewer. The only question is whether you support him or not, but you are never indifferent, and that is what makes a good play. Pinova is one of Atabayev's rare independent theatre colleagues. Aksaray put on several plays on the stage of her Artishok theatre. Galina says that after Zanozen tragedy, Atabayev, the politician, began taking over Atabayev, the director. This this could serve as an excuse for colleagues to ignore his arrest, saying the case was politically motivated. However, Pinhova thinks otherwise, especially considering Atabayev's prominence. It is impossible to look over the fact that Balat Atabayev was arrested. If you ignore that, you can ignore your own existence in general. As a theatrical coincidence, the lower chamber of parliament convened a round table last week on the subject of theatre in modern Kazakhstan. At an opening session, chairman Dariga Nazarbayeva called on theatre workers to behave and establish the framework of the discussion. These days, we'd be better off without your dirty laundry. Who loves or hates whom? Who's better or worse? In other words, being typical Kazakhs. In the end, stage directors, famous theatre critics and playwrights discussed issues ranging from theatre education to access law wages. Bulat Atabayev, arrested earlier, did not figure in any of these conversations. Instead, Atabayev's German colleagues came to his defence by writing a note of protest to the Kazakhstan government. On top of that, Amnesty International recognised Bulat Atabayev as a prisoner of conscience. There is a feeling that we are approaching the time when artists will be forced to choose their position, because otherwise they will be too far removed from the audience. Stranger things have happened, but now the former mayor of Zhanaozen Orak Sarbopeyev, who was charged with abuse of office and bribery, was fully acquitted by the Mangistar Regional Court.
On Friday, by the verdict of the jury, he was released in the courtroom. During the initial days following the December tragedy, Prosecutor General of Kazakhstan, Ashad Daulbaev, said that the rise of social tensions in Janauzian and the mass strike of oil workers was partly due to the corruption crimes committed by city mayors Babakhanov and Sarbopeyev. Now that accusations are safely forgotten, and a whole layer of causes of the tragedy, including the involvement of regional and municipal authorities, along with management of oil companies remains unexplored and unresolved. The judicial machine runs only against the instigators of social hatred and is set for upcoming trials of Kozlovsa, Pargali, Atabayeva, Mamai and other activists. Prime Minister Masimov says it is possible the national budget for 2013 will be sequestered due to oil prices dropping to $50 per barrel in the second half of the year. Kazakhstan's budget forecast an average price of oil at $90 per barrel, although it was initially planned to be $80. In the meantime, experts predict that already this year the price of oil could fall as low as $40 per barrel. For oil-dependent states such as Kazakhstan, it may result in increased social tension and the collapse of living standards. However, a golden decade of high prices for the main export product of the country did not result in great social benefits for the local population and even those who work directly with oil extraction. Instead, people from Kumkol to Tengiz and from Kurik to Janauzian were treated with bullet storms. Scorching winds and a 50 degree heat, the streets of Kurik are empty. The Karakiak regional center looks more like a ghost town. Residents of the oil rich region are denied the most basic benefits of civilization. <laughs> They promised to lay a water pipe in the yard. Now they say it's not in the construction plan. They want us to pay for the pipes and everything. We are asked to make advanced payments of 540 US dollars for natural gas, but we pay every month as it is. They also want us to change the meter, but it costs another 540 US dollars. Are we to finance the entire work of the gas service? Kurik's main issue is unemployment. According to locals, after the Yersai strikes, 90% of oil workers were left without work. Our young go to the town in search of work and they are told they are rebels. Our future doesn't concern anyone. Nobody cares that the oil workers have families. Locals even travel to Aktober region in search of work. The Kurik Central Market is a place where goods can be loaned. The biggest demand is for food and household items. Aksulu comes to the markets almost every day. The heroine mother is the only breadwinner in her big family. Her 270 US dollar pension feeds 15 children. My son was among the protesters and he is at home now unemployed. He has a family but not a job. They don't employ him because he took part in the strikes. He has been sitting at home for over a year now. Oil workers of the small village Kurik were the first to voice their demands towards management last May. 700 Yersai Caspian contract employees went on strike demanding a review of the labor agreement and raise wages. They say we get paid $2,000 while we demand $4,000. Do we look like we get paid $2,000? No. Soon other oil company employees joined Yersai protesters and they grew into a hunger strike. Oil workers' wives came out in support of their husbands. We are on our own land. Kazakhs don't fight Kazakhs. We will not stand here and watch as our sisters and brothers are being enslaved. The months-long conflict ended in mass firings of not just the oil workers, but their close ones who took part in the strike. 
My wife was a math teacher. She was dismissed at the mayor's orders for supporting protesters. She's now unemployed. When Oilman's wives went on strike, I joined them in their support. And even though my son wasn't there, he was told to resign because I was. He said them he doesn't have a mother. What else could he do? Karajan Bas and Ozen get at least some attention, as you know, but they forget about Yersai. When Shakif arrived, we reminded him about us, but they told us that Yersai wasn't their problem. 26-year-old Askar Magambetov is one of the many who were left without work. He is now a cab driver using his old car. The men's employer fired him on two counts for taking part in the unsanctioned rally and truancy. <laughs> People say that young people are our future, but what is it like? Even though most of us have higher education, we can't find jobs. For instance, I have a degree in law and economics, but I'm still unemployed. It is hard to call living conditions in Kuri comfortable. Notwithstanding its vicinity to the sea, tourism is completely underdeveloped here. With alkaline lands and dry climate, this area isn't even suitable for cattle husbandry. Domestic animals graze in the junkyards and drink sewage water. We work where we can. After all, we need to feed our families. We mood light to buy bread. If we want meat, we catch crawfish. What should we do? We had an instance when a child died of starvation. Kurik's main attraction is the mayor's office and the building of the ruling party in Uratan. A banner stands out from the plain background with President Nazarbayev and a sign that reads Labour for the People. Next on Vlast KZ. Permission Zone. The escape of 11 soldiers from Zaisan border outpost. Rockets in the homeland. The shortcomings of the Baikonur space launching site leads. Russian rockets are hazardous, with rockets fuel equated to chemical weapons. Vlaske Z will return shortly. Главные события в Казахстане. Достоверные факты. Эксклюзивные комментарии. Читайте в Казахстане информационно-аналитический портал «Республика». Чтобы обойти блокировки, воспользуйтесь доменом республика.инфо. Вы окажетесь на так называемом прокси-портале. Специально разработанные канадскими специалистами по интернет-технологиям прокси-порталы помогают пользователям получать информацию в тех странах, где блокируют интернет-ресурсы. В Китае, Иране, в Казахстане. Вы принимаете условия использования системы и попадаете на страницу информационно-аналитического портала «Республика». Материалы интернет-портала также доступны пользователям всемирной сети Facebook. facebook.com. Республика.каз Если вы хотите поделиться информацией, вам есть что рассказать, звоните в редакцию «Республики». Наши телефоны в Казахстане – плюс 7 727 273 92 95, в Москве – плюс 7 495 621 87 03. Новости Казахстана на казахском языке смотрите в 21.00 и далее каждый нечетный час. Новости Казахстана на русском языке в 22.00 и далее каждый четный час. Новости Казахстана на английском языке смотрите в 16.30, 17.30, 18.30 и 19.30 со вторника по субботу. Время Астаны. Изготовление и размещение рекламы на канале К+. A new incident took place at the Chinese border three weeks after the Arkhankirgan outpost massacre. This time, 11 border guards deserted their frontier post but were later found 10 kilometers away in a nearby village. 
Even before the capture of fugitives, hazing was said to be the reason of their desertion, which suspiciously easily confirms the root cause of an alleged momentary insanity of Vladislav Chelach. Apparently, in contrast to Zaisan border guards, instead of desertion, he preferred to pay back his offenders with automatic rifle and pistol fire, which he later confirmed with a confession. There is a persistent view that the government distracts people away from the incidents and manipulates public opinion. The timing of the first emergency at the border seemed to raise questions, since it happened immediately after the verdict announcement on the case of Janauzian oil workers. Private Chelakh and Narkagirgan massacre diverted public attention from unjust trials. But the development did not bring intended results, and the authorities are now trying to turn public attention to a new story, that of desertion caused by hazing, which also supports the official theory in the case on Vladislav Chelach. It seems that hazing is widespread in all border outposts, which can explain a lot of recent incidents. It's been raining all week. This weather is probably the only thing that upsets the resident of Zaisan. One can write pastoral poems about the life of a primary school teacher, Kurulai Sesinbayeva. She has three children, a loving husband, and she enjoys the beauty of East Kazakhstan with mountains on one hand and a picturesque lake on the other. She owns a kitchen garden like all her neighbors and has big plans for the future. We want to build a new cookhouse over here. This year we plan on building a garage as well. This is the purpose of our lives, our children. We build all this for them. A total of more than 30,000 people reside in Zaisan. The town is located almost at the border of China, and it grows year by year. Wages are low, and they vary from 135 to 200 dollars, but no one seems to be complaining. Only young people leave for other cities, yet when they grow up and mature, they all come back home. <laughs> Even the incident at the border outpost could not spoil the harmony of Zaisan. Or rather, no one knew about it until all local channels covered the incident in the news. Earlier in the week, 11 conscripts abandoned the neighboring outpost to Sayruk. They were absent without official leave for almost a day. Initially, their immediate supervisor tried to find the fugitives on his own before the news went public. Military absentees were found 18 kilometers from the post in the village of Jantalap. Rumors were spread that young soldiers just wanted female companionship and went to the village disco. Almost immediately, military prosecutors from the capital arrived in Zaisan. Later, official sources announced that soldiers left the outpost without weapons. They were not looking for entertainment, but seeking protection. Each one of them complained about hazing. Torali Bakirov, an Uskaminagorsk lawyer, was the first to question the fugitives and considered the disco rumors nonsense. He says 19-year-old soldiers were subjected to systematic physical abuse after first arriving at the outpost on May 25th. Not being able to bear it any longer, they decided to run away. We believe that hazing was the reason for unauthorized absence. Perhaps they wanted to draw attention to the fact that they were dissatisfied with certain issues at the outpost, a kind of demonstration of disagreement with the leadership's requirements. They left without weapons to avoid any consequences. A criminal case was filed on the incident of unauthorized absence. Three of contracting personnel were arrested on suspicion of exceeding authority. The chief of the outpost, who was the first one to search for the fugitives, is among the arrested, charged with concealment. The names are not yet disclosed, but all 11 soldiers have pointed to the same comrades in arms. During the investigation, individuals involved in the incident stayed at the 2017 military unit in Zaisan. They were arrested for beatings, is that true? No, you should contact her over the phone. Well, this is the official information, is it true? No. According to a Zaisan border detachment captain, no outsider will be allowed on Tersayrik outpost for another six days. Public concern due to the lack of information is slowly affecting the local population. I'm sure those guys were pressured. There is to be an essential reason why the group of people ran away. Why would so many people decide to run without reason? There must be a significant one. Whatever it is, it's bad for our people. Last night there was an incident at the border, and tomorrow there will be another one. It reveals the way our border service operates. They cannot cope even with internal problems. Or maybe there's something wrong with the young people. Perhaps it's the lack of proper patriotic upbringing. How are they going to defend us with this kind of attitude towards their duties?
Many see similarities with the tragedy at the Yarkankirgan outpost. Less than a month ago, 14 border guards and a huntsman were killed there. The remaining 15th soldier, 19-year-old Vladislav Chelak, was found alive. He confessed to the killings, citing hazing as the motive. Chelak said that his fellow soldiers used to mock him and didn't take him seriously. This has nothing to do with the Arkhangelian outpost incident. Two unprecedented incidents in a row, both at the Kazakh-Chinese border. Too much of a coincidence for some people not to start assuming Chinese involvement. The authorities made it clear that no one attacked Arkhangelian outpost, while Zaisan residents themselves exclude the implication of Chinese involvement in the Tersayrik escape incident. The only conflict recalled by local residents with neighbors at the border is abaction. Every once in a while, Kazakhs and Chinese both steal the cattle from each other. However, this has nothing to do with politics. It's been happening for centuries. But Zaisan residents refuse to believe in the Chinese attack version for another reason as well. Their trade links are well established. Kazakhs who live at the border consume only Chinese products. Moreover, 12% from a million of repatriates residing in Kazakhstan moved here from China. 55-year-old Abish Turzbek moved to his historical homeland seven years ago. He's not very rich, raising three children. Turzbek likes it here in Kazakhstan, saying he's seen worse. Of course, for children's future, he would like to move to the center of the country, but it's yet impossible. Thus, the family cannot leave, even if the border incidents continue. What can I do? I can only do so much, I guess. A man can do no more than he can. Of course, we are concerned, but the truth is we can't do anything about it. In the meantime, the legal case on hazing at Tersayrik outpost is still underway, while a new supervisor was temporarily assigned at the outpost. Three contracting personnel are under investigation. What will happen to 11 soldiers who tried to draw attention to their problems is still unknown either. After all, they still have abandoned their post. Chances are, they will be punished as well. Events at the border and their subsequent official interpretations created public distrust to the government. The population now has one question. Who are they taking us for? This time, people seem to be insulted with the manipulation of public opinion by the authorities. The family of Ruslan Kim intend to sue the newspaper, which exposed personal life details of the killed huntsman and made far-reaching conclusions. It has been suggested that all of this is just an attempt to divert attention from a close relative of the head of state, who could have been involved in the tragedy. Alternatively, this could be the result of interagency and interclan wars. In contrast to Janauzian tragedy, the official interpretation of which was quickly shattered by a video. This time the authorities attempted to take full control over the information flow in relation to the border incidents. However, during the first few days after the Arkhankirgan massacre, official comments lacked coordination, to the point when agencies and think tanks were urged to carefully consider what they spew out. The parliament decided to respond to the outpost incidents with a new law on the state border. We are expecting in the parliament in the upcoming months a new law on state border. This will be a brand new law. It is being prepared by the corresponding committee on border patrol. I think that within the framework of preparation of this bill, we will work on analyzing the situation with the border security. The space launching site Baikonur will operate and develop regardless of whether Russia will extend its lease until 2050, said the chairman of the National Space Agency of Kazakhstan, Talhat Musabayev, this past week. In the words of the second Kazakh astronaut, our plans and forecasts see further development of the space launching site. The lease agreement with Russia on space launching site Baikonur was extended to 2050, and it envisages the joint development of the space rocket complex Baitarek, with a simultaneous reduction of rocket launches fueled by a toxic component Heptil. The latter caused a lot of trouble for the population of Kazakhstan. First and foremost, the responsibility lies on the Kazakhs because this is our historic homeland. We have no other. If we cannot be happy here, we will be unhappy anywhere. 
An urgent press conference was held immediately after Vladimir Putin's departure. For the people present, the Russian president's visit not only shows a threat to independence, but can also lead to the self-destruction of the state. The national patriots are most concerned about joint plans to build a nuclear power plant. Having survived 40 years of nuclear testing, it seems Kazakhstan is once again in danger of becoming a test site. Nuclear plants are built where other sources of energy are scarce, where there's a high density of population, but we have the lowest density in the world. Besides, why does Kazakhstan need a nuclear power plant since it can cause major damage? Japan, along with other European nations, flatly refuse nuclear power altogether. National patriots strongly oppose the lease of land in Aktuban Kustanai regions to Russia. Roscosmos needs the area for the landing of its rocket carriers. According to Russian newspaper Izvestia, all the major points of agreement between the two states were reached, including the price, which amounts to 460,000 US dollars a year. These are the remains of the Russian ballistic missile RS-20, dubbed Satan by Americans. In the summer of 2010, its pieces, one of those stages and a fuel tank, fell into the Mangistar region. Local sanitary epidemiological station specialists reassured at the time that the landing did not lead to any emergencies. Officially, the increase of background radiation and chemical pollution was not recorded. However, village residents think otherwise. We are against Heptil. The government says we need to raise demographics, but how can we bear children in these conditions? To be honest, we are afraid because children are born with disabilities. There are no healthy babies. Many have respiratory tract and liver diseases. All of this is because of the bad environment. The women's fears are not unfounded. The elderly admit they have never seen anything like that in their entire lives. The places where the remains of rockets fell were changed beyond recognition by Heptil. Cattle became ill with different diseases. Many mares with foal had miscarriages. Incurable ulcers appeared on camels' bodies. Camels and foals were born without legs. I believe it is because of heptal. They conducted research before, but now it's all been abandoned. This is where we analyze the remains of heptal, identifying unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine. The head of physical chemical methods of analysis in an environmental chemistry lab, Kalisha Manbekov, knows just about everything about heptal. This component of rocket fuel is four times as toxic as cyanide. Heptal is equated to a chemical weapon and is extremely hazardous, since it can cause mutations in cancerous tumors in a person. Unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine is a highly toxic substance considered class 1. In other words, this is a dangerous substance not only for human organism but animals and plants as well. One can immediately observe highly negative effects and transformations can be seen right away. This approach towards leasing land demonstrates that Putin considers Kazakhstan his estate, and that may not be far-fetched since Azarbaev is practically his puppet. Kwana Shalin blames one person. In his opinion, in the 21st century, the leader of the nation single-handedly turned Kazakhstan into a Russian colony. In this regard, Jasaral Kwana Shalin makes sad forecast. Such a puppet policy by Nazarbayev cannot lead anywhere good. It can lead to the disintegration of the state and a loss of independence. He's the actual author of these ideas with the customs union, the Eurasian Union, everything that pulls Kazakhstan back into the hands of its former host country. At the closing of the press conference, national patriots addressed the president, cabinet, parliament and citizens of Kazakhstan. Nuclear disaster, territorial losses, famine, all of this should serve as a lesson for Kazakhstanis. Those Kazakhs whose heart aches for their motherland should get together and speak out against integration with Russia. The independence that our forefathers fought for cannot be simply given away. The leader of the rock band Kino, Viktor Tsoi, would have turned 50 this past week. With his death, the heroic era of Soviet rock reached its end. In this regard, a well-known Russian music critic Artemy Troitsky said that, quote, for us, the residents of an underground arc of stagnation, rock was not only the music and the occasion, it was a piece of freedom and weapon of the resistance against stupidity, lies, spiritual and intellectual violence. Rock was persecuted by the authorities since it was perceived to be dangerous. Rock was not corrupted, it was unselfish. And rock and roll will keep going in the 21st century, but this music of tomorrow will become the music of originally free people and not of those who try to assert their freedoms.
On Saturday, June 23rd, he would have turned 50. He was the last Soviet romanticist and the legend of Perestroika who was ahead of his time. He was the one who predicted changes. So he was not afraid to express his thoughts. He was not afraid of anything, neither authorities nor persecution. Therefore, he's an inspiration for today's youth. Every song was like a discovery, really coming from the heart, the perception of our reality. He was simply expressing all of it clearly and accurately in his songs. It is all relevant even today. Each song could be applied to a certain event. It is still very relevant for me personally. The song Our Hearts, Demanding Changes, was performed ten times at the Almaty concert dedicated to Viktor Tsoi's anniversary. It's not a coincidence, believes journalist Polina Szymanska. The song is called We Need Changes and it's a headliner. It's been covered by all bands. Perhaps the time for changes has come indeed. And I also want them just like the others. Polina was lucky to see Tsoi performing live at the concert in Almaty back in 1989. She recalls how scary and unusual it was to demand for changes by the entire stadium full of people. Because of this song, he was put on the list of ideologically harmful musicians in the 80s. Nowadays, people reflect on Soy wondering whether he would demand the changes now. Perhaps the stars predetermined his fate. He sparked like a star and then died. He brought certain information to people and had to disappear. The ongoing disputes on whether the time has chosen Viktor Tsoi or the musician himself changed the nature of time take place even upon his death 20 years later. There's no definite answer. People only guess about it from a few remaining interviews. This film is very different from the most presented here, so just as much as the hard rock artist is irrelevant at the jazz festival, I don't see a reason to be here. This footage from the 89 Golden Duke Festival, journalist of the Central State TV station is asking Tsoi ideologically correct questions. The star of the film, Iglad the Needle, is obviously not interested, as he has already been living in a different world for a while at this point. Even young people who come here, they look like genes produced in Soviet Union times. They look outdated even though they were made just recently. That's why this isn't our party. Everything is old school here, including young people. They became so hooked on art that it seemed like the movie determined the fate of its producers. Even 20 years later, walking through Almaty, Bahut Kilibayev, who wrote the screenplay of the cult favorite The Needle, easily spots locations they visited with Tsoi. This is the apartment he used to live in, and that is where they filmed an important scene. It's a challenge for me, can't express it with words. Kilibayev is 54, he went from a script writer and successful advertiser to a free artist who lives in three cities, Almaty, Moscow and Goa. But the philosophy he considered important 20 years ago is still relevant now. There are three generations present in this world at the same time, children, fathers and grandfathers. The role of grandfathers is to rule this world, they have specific leverages to do so. The role of fathers is to preserve this world the way it is, whereas the role of children is to develop. So you and I, we live during a very unique period of time. The global civilizational transition is underway. And what is this transition in terms of interaction between generations? All these connected officials, they do not understand the numbers. They have world controls and leverages, yet they have no comprehension of the new ways. The generation of children will dominate during this transition. Every generation has its evolutionary mission. So now the generation of children will be relevant for the first time. In the meantime, the generation of children who attended the concert in Almaty is clearly in search of a hero. But according to Rashid Nugmanov, who directed The Needle, the hero cannot appear in a place with changed values. 
I've been meaning to tell you for a while that people are divided in two categories, those hooked on the needle and the others who just need money. You're the one hooked on the needle. They need no changes. They began to understand the rules of the game, how to behave themselves to become successful and wealthy. The formula becomes a priority. You follow it and the people forget about heroism. They need no profits either. And of course, lately we've had rules. People follow them as opposed to playing heroes. Two years ago, Nugmanov made a remix of The Needle. The song playing at the end of the film was written by Viktor Tsoi, the appeal to the children of minutes. The lyrics were found in the personal belongings of the rock musician. He sang about changes himself, yet he left this message in the desktop for the next generation. Thank you for watching Vlast KZ, Trends, Events and Personalities. See you next week.